Um, so we'll do the Spandas part this morning. Uh, there may be a cancellation this afternoon. If so, I stepped in and said that I could do the second part of my tutorial. But if you've already done Pandas, um, this is not for you. And yeah, it's really Pandas for beginners. And then, yeah, maybe Psychic Learn this afternoon, maybe not. I'm, I send an e a message to the organizers to know. So, like, I don't want you to lose your time. So, if, yeah, once again. <laughs> And so you won't need much this morning anyway. Um, so here, like even this morning, like for this morning, you, will, you won't need Psychic Learn. Uh, yellow Brick, I don't think either. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But yeah. These are the main things that you will need, like Pandas and Jupiter. Um... Oops. I could dismiss that. Did everyone already use Jupyter Notebooks or did some of you never used it? Which is not a problem, but just... That's good for everyone? Cool. Okay, so for those, for those who just arrived, I'll say it again, I'll, I will just have the time to do the pandas part this morning. Uh, and it's pandas for beginners. So if you've already using pandas, it's probably useless for you. And yeah, maybe.
And please let me know if you need any help to start a Jupyter notebook because you've never done it. Yeah. Uh, it's not a big deal. We're just gonna use it like for one or two cells. So. What? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but did you did you did you install an did you install Conda on your in your virtual environment or not? On my operating system. Yeah, but then each time you do a virtual environment, you need to reinstall everything. You just have Python in your virtual environment, so you don't have. Con I don't. Well, I don't think you. I don't know. No, now it's using this environment. Yeah. I'd like to use the spike on the environment. Mm -hmm. So I can use pip install, I guess it, I will be. Yeah. I think, I think you can pip, but, pip but install you can anyway. Load the con environment. So um, load the con environment and then you can pip install in the con environment. So I'm asking how can I load this, this environment, yeah. So I can ask you from, oh, this, it's, from um, this environment, I can ask you this environment, yeah. Con, it's just conda. Conda. Oh uh, shit, load environment. Let me find. Uh, so let's activate. Is that what it is? Yeah, so, so you know, then I will try to install it with pip install, but probably because there is a package. Yeah. yeah, my virtual environment are not under Conda, so I don't, I'm not sure about that. So, but source space activate space the environment name. Is the yeah, it's the same. So, source, source space activate, activate yeah. the environment name. So, uh, I can do, uh, it's like usually okay. okay there you go. So, now I can try to install your Yes, yeah, you can install everything. Conda yeah, install. Uh, Sunday, so. uh, I mean, works, so. Pip should work as well, but yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. If you don't have yellow brick, don't don't worry. Okay. Yeah. I d I'm not even sure I use it in the first notebook, and even though it would be in one or two cells, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> Oops. Where did I use it? No, yellow brick is not. We're not going to use yellow brick this morning. So just. Yeah, but is it just part of yeah, yeah. It's just part of scikit-learn. No, it's another library, I believe. Yeah, no, it's another library. It's not part of scikit-learn. So just before we give it give it a start, uh, for the last one who arrived, we're just going to do the pandas part this morning because an hour and a half is not long enough to do. Pandas and Scikit-Learn, and if there is a constellation this afternoon, I stepped in to to do the second part, but I don't know yet, so maybe, maybe not. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> so everyone, get a get the opportunity to download, or like you don't really need to clone. Download is enough, and open a Jupyter notebook, or do you tell me if you have issues, and then when we'll we'll kick off.
Okay, so I'll just super quickly present myself. So my name is Sandrine Pato. I'm French, live in London, work as a data scientist at QBE Insurance, and I'm a former teacher. Uh, so hopefully my skills are useful today. <laughs> So, if le please let me know if not everyone is there and have a, a notebook open. So we're gonna we're gonna start with the first notebook, and that's mainly what we'll have the time to do this morning, which is data wrangling uh, with Python with pandas, sorry, which is built on Python. Um, everyone knows once again how Jupyter Notebook works globally, or not at all. Yeah. Uh, so it's Sandrine P. Let me show that again. And then if you go to my, where is my mouse? If you go to, if you look for Sandrine P, then you will find, like I managed to have it. It's the first one on the, on the, on my uh, homepage. So like if you just Google Sandrine P GitHub, you should find it easily. So like once again on the installation side, you will need Jupyter, Pandas and Matplotlib, maybe Seaborn. Not scikit-learn, not yellow brick. So, like, don't get worried if you can't install yellow brick. All good? Okay. Um, so let me go back to the first notebook. So if you don't know Kaggle, that's a website, like that's a data science competition website, but there are also lots of open source uh, data set that you can find. Um, one advice is, even if it's on Kaggle, if I were you, I would check that it is open source and what's the condition to use the data. And also remember that we are in, in Europe and it's not because data is open source that you have the right to do whatever you want because GDPR. So that's an advice. Um, so this one is definitely open source. So we're going, going to use the um, Titanic data set, which is a really classic one when you start to work uh, with pandas and with scikit-learn. So you can find like I I put the link so that you can you can have a look look at it but I've already put it in the folder so no worries. So first things we're going to do is import pandas. Uh, yeah, you'll see like most if not all the cells are empty and my way of working is for us to fill it together because I believe that when you type you learn more than just running cells. So we're going to import pandas as PD. Some people do. That's a super common way to import pandas. Some people just use pandas completely, like the full pandas name. Um, it depends. You do whatever you want, as you know. Um, another thing that I have to warn you about, it's it's my French laptop when I usually we, we work with an English one. So there will be probably lots of misspelling with Qs instead of As. So that's usually the fun side of changing laptops. Okay, um, you could import no, uh, NumPy as NP, but it's already within Pandas, so you can also do NP equals PD dot NP, and you will have loaded uh, NumPy. The 
The first thing we're going to do now, the next thing we're going to do now is to import a data frame. So we're going to call it df. And to do that, we're going to, it's a CSV file. So we're going to do pandas dot read underscore CSV. And we'll put the pass. Ah, that's the other problem. There are the queues and the brackets and the quotes. Um, so it's in the data folder. Then there is a Titanic folder. And the first one is called train.csv. Okay, there is oh, two Ds. Yes. Yes. Is it big enough or not? Do you want me to make it bigger or? Yeah, 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 okay. You're welcome. I don't know if I can move that. Okay, so there is another data frame, which is the holdout. Um, So we're gonna say import it. So pandas dot read csv. Crap. And it's in the same folder. And it's called like the the only difference is that it's called test dot csv. Data Titanic. And test dot csv. So when you're doing data science, um, what you want is to have a holdout, so part of your data that you're not gonna look at until the really end, the at the end of of your process to check that your prediction are good. Okay, but you don't want to look at it, you don't want to be biased, you don't want to see what it looks like, you don't want to see if it looks like the rest of your data. Um, if we had a time series, we would, for example, take the first two years in our train, in our training set, and in our old out, the, na the last six months, or something like that. And we would train on the first two years, and we will keep the hold out the last six months, and like untouched and we don't want to look at it and then see if our prediction uh, our predictive model works fine on the on this last, last two months uh, six months sorry okay so same for your data preparation you don't want to be biased you don't want to say oh here there is something in my holdout that I, that I should pay attention to no if there is a change in the data you shouldn't know about it because in real life you won't know about a new a, a change that it's that is coming Okay, um, so there is in uh, the Jupyter Notebook, you can look for help. So if we, long, if we want to look at the help of the first function that we use, so panda read, uh, dot read CSV, we can just put a question mark and then write your fun our function, read CSV, and it will open down there the help and give you all uh, the parameters that you can use in your function. You can also use uh, shift tab when you're on the function. Oops. Normally here and you will have it here and you can just have the same thing here. Okay, 
Uh, I just put, so that's, that's something that I found on the Kaggle website. So you have the data dictionary. So that's the different columns that we will have in our data frame. Um, so we'll have different information about the passengers. Well, first, if they survive or not, that's what we would, uh, try to predict with the, with the model. So that's, that would be our target. So first thing we're going to do is to have a look at the first five rows using the head method. So our data frame is called df and we're going to do df.head and by default it will show us the first five rows. We can also decide to look just as, at one if we want to just look at the first row at 20 or whatever. We can, we can pass it a different number. So similarly, there is a tell method. So same if we want to look at it because we want to only look at the last three rows, we can again use our question mark pandas dot data frame because it's applied to a data frame. So if you don't put that, you won't get the help you're looking for. And so same, it will tell us like the default value is five. So if we do df dot tell three, we will have only three. Oh, sorry, I should have closed that. We should, we will only see three, the last three rows, sorry. Then we can look at the shape of our data frame. So we can use the shape attribute and it will return the number of rows and the number of columns of our data frame. Another useful one is df.info, the method, not the, um, the attribute with brackets, and it will return the, the name of the different columns of our data frame, and it will also give us uh, the type and the number of non-null values in the column. So like we can see that most of them have lots of non nulls and we have like cabin that is not well filled and age that is not completely filled. After that, if we want to have a look at the numerical columns, we can also use the describe method to see the distribution of these columns. So df.describe and it will return the con, the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum, the first and third quartile, the median, and the maximum of the different numerical columns. Um, here I put a note, so like there is another library which is called um, Pandas Profiling, which is quite useful as well, but it could take super long to run, depending on your size, the size of your data frame, because it will give you, but it will give you more information on each column. For example, knowing that you have a column that is completely filled, so no non-values, 
that's good, but if they're all the same, it's not really useful. If they're all equal to zero, well, you'd like to, you'd like to know that. And pandas profiling will tell you that. Um, it will, it will give you more information, but like I didn't want to install that and to run that. But like once again, big data frame, it takes lots of time. So if you want, like what I usually do is I, I use it on certain columns and not on all, like all the columns of the data frame. Or you make it run and you just go do something else. That's another option. Uh, you can, you can, you have to install it. That's another library. It's called pandas profiling, but it's not in pandas. So you'll have to pip install it or to conda, inst you can probably conda install it as well. After that, we can get a list of the column names. So df dot columns. And if we want to put it uh, in a list, we use two lists. Because otherwise, if you have a too long list, you wouldn't see everything. Oops. Two list. What is that? Ah. Yeah, without underscore, I was correct the first time, and it's that I have a double M. That's better like that. Okay. So that's our 12 or so columns. So after that, I, I will use um, the option to display a smaller number of rows than the default one. So if we want to lose at the default number of rows, you do pandas dot options dot display dot max underscore rows, and it will tell you that the default one is 60. And what I want to do now is to set it at 15. So you just give it the value 15. So now we will maximum see 15 rows when, well, 15 rows will be di displayed. Okay. Um, subsetting now. So there are different ways to subset a data frame. Uh, the first one that we will see is just to get a column. So if we want to look at the crap, sorry, not crap. Uh, at the P class column. So we'll just we will just uh, pass p class into square brackets and we will see the first 15 value well not the first 15 values sorry but we will see 15 values the first and the last ones of the p class colon and it also at the end tells us once again the length of the colon and the type of the data So after that, if we want to look at the 12th observation, there are two ways to do that. Either we use iLock or dot iLock or dot lock. So here it's going to be the same because the index and the position are the same. I stand for integer, not index. Um, so it's going to be the position of your rows 
or your colon when we work with it. Here it's the same, so we're gonna just do pass the number 11 to have the 12th uh, value. The 12th row. And so if we do a df.lock with 11, that's gonna give us the same thing exactly. Oops. So after that, if we want to look at the name of the last three observations, this time we're going to work on rows and on colon at the same time. So if we use iLock, all good? So df.iLock, first we're going to give it the rows position. So we can start, because again it's position, we can start at minus three until the end. And for, what was it? The name, so we'll have to look, the name is 0, 1, 2, 3. So the third column, uh, the fourth column, sorry, so with uh, integer 3. And we will have the last three observations, and we'll get their names. With dot lock, We'll have to give it an index, so the first index we want is 888 until the end. And we can pass it just the name of the colon and we will get the same thing. It pro it shouldn't work. Because the thing is, here, the 888 is the index. It doesn't have index minus 3, so it's probably starting at 0 and gives you everything, no? I guess? Yeah. yeah. No, for me, like I didn't, I didn't try, but normally with lock you use index, so index of the rows index, so name of the column, and the other one it's all position. So you can try, but like I don't think it will return you anything if you give tr three because it doesn't know a colon called three. So after that, it, it all depends what you want to do with your colon. If you want to do a loop and need an integer in your loop, and then and then it's it's well, it, it really depends. It's possibly easier if you want to use the position of the row to use that, but then you have to make sure that the position of your colon is the correct one. Um, yeah, it depends on the situation. So both are useful. Okay, um, finally have a look at the age and fare of the 45th, the 1st and the 8th observation. So if you're there already, you can give it a, a try. So one will be with iLock, one will be with lock. So you'll have to check the position of the age and fair column. In the in the I log, sorry, which is integer is position. 
lock its labels. So labels for the columns and index for the rows. So what did I say? 40 fifths and then the first and then the eighth. So we can just pass it a list. Yeah. A list of positions and then same for the columns. We said what age and fair? Five. Five and nine, am I correct? Okay. And so for lock, the same list, 4407, and then age and fair. Yeah. It doesn't work. Why? So you, I just one row. So it depends what you've done. If, if you've done, uh, if you, df dot iLock. If you pass it just like that, 4407, yeah. well, it doesn't understand because like for him, the 44 corresponds to the rows, the 0 to the colon, and then the 7 it doesn't know. Like, if you pass it... This way it works. You have to pass it a list so that it knows that it has to look at this list of things. Okay. No, it's it's their index. So like it's label for colon, index for rows. And the other one is integer I for integer, so position for both. Yes. I have no idea. But that's a good question. <laughs> See no anyone knows? No? I don't know if there is a difference in speed or for me it really did like I use it I use one or the other depending on my needs. Um but yeah. Okay, another thing you have to pay attention to is iLock dot iLock and dot lock doesn't work the same exactly. So if you use iLock, the end value in the um, in the range is included or not. Uh sorry, I don't I forgot how I started my sentence, so I don't know how to finish it. So if we want to look at I don't know like the five like the rows from five to ten, if you do it with lock, you can see that the row with index 10 is included. If you do the same thing with iLock, it will stop at 9. All good, or you have a question? No? Cool. Okay.
So we're going to clean different columns. The first one, so we're going to label this one, the sex column. So the first one we're going to look at is the count of the different value in this column. So we want to look at the sex column. So we do df square brackets and then we pass, like in general, the name of our, the column we want to work with. So like once again, like it's the same as I don't remember who has the question, but like if we wanted to look at two columns, we would have to pass a list of columns. So like we would have two pair of square brackets. Uh, and we're going to do a value count. So dot value underscore counts. And we will see. 577 male, 350 or 40, sorry, female. So one way to labelize this column, to so change that into into numbers, don't have male and female, but have zeros and one, is to use a, a map function. Uh, so we're going to create, sorry, a dictionary. So you call it the way you want. For me, deco makes sense because that's a, a, a short way to say dictionary in French, but I don't know if that makes sense to everyone. <laughs> We're going to do others, uh, at least another one. So that's why I give it a name corresponding to the column. And so we're going to give it, where are my curly brackets? Um, male, the value zero and female, the value one. Oops. Okay, and we're going to apply this uh, dictionary to our column, and we're going to create a new column uh, doing that. To create a new column, there is, it's super easy. You just pass the name of your new column to your uh, data frame. So this one is going to be called sex lab for label. Yeah, I know. I made that to make, to make <laughs> one of my friend laugh and now I'm, I'm videoed saying sex lab. So like, please think of me. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> it's fun anyway. Um, so we're gonna do, so our first colon. So the sex, uh, colon and we're gonna do a dot map and we're just gonna pass it the dictionary. So. Up. And we have a new column created. That's simple. And we're going to check the values that we have in our, co in your new column. So you can redo a value count, um, and apply it to the sex lab column. Yep, forgot to E. And we can see in this column we have zeros instead of male and one instead of female. Um, usually I know that like you can labelize, like there are other way to do to, to labelize columns, um, I like to decide the way it is labeled. So usually I use a dictionary, but there are other ways to do it. So, um, for example, for me, for the embout colon, what I wanted to do is to get the labels in order, 
um, where people went on the boat. So like, what did I do? One will be, so that's why I looked in which, like, what was the first stop? So some Tom will be la labeled one. Uh, after that, we have what? Cherbourg will be labeled two and Queenstown will be labeled three. Um, so first we're going to look at not the number, not the count, but the proportion uh, of the different value in the embarked column. So embarked. And so the only thing that you have to do, we're going to do a value count, but we're going to pass it normalize equal true, equal true, true, sorry. Normalize equal true. And instead of, oops, value counts, instead of returning the number uh, uh, for each value, like a count for each value, it returns a proportion. So same if you're already there, you can also start to labelize the column. So we can we're gonna create a dictionary. So deco emb oops, underscore would be better. So I said so for S, S will be one, C two, and Q three. No, too far. So after that, I said C two Q three. Ah, crap. And same, we're gonna create a new column. Embarked lab, uh, and to do that, we're gonna we're gonna map our dictionary to the embarked column. I did, and that's a mistake. Thanks. It should be a capital S. Thanks. Is there a way to make Anders case be dependent? Oh, I don't think so. No, 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 I don't think you can do that. And same, you can check the proportion. Um, but this time, I'd like to see the proportion including the non-values, because there are some non-values in this column. So on top of uh, giving it normalize equal true, we're going to pass it drop na equal false, because by default it drops the, the non-values. I forgot the And we see that the values are a little bit different than the previous one because this time we have included the non values. <laughs> yep. 
Yes. Why the label? Sorry. Um, because there are none values. None is a float. It's it's a count, so like these are the values that you have in your columns. It's not. Yeah, but my point is was that because there is a none value, none is a float, so that changed all our column. Like even even if we give it um, integers, because of the nuns, it turns it it turns everything into floats. And so talking about the NAND values, we want to replace them with zeros. So we can do that. So we do, um, so if we just do that, I'll show you DF, uh, embarked lab, embarked lab, whoops, <laughs> no. So if you, we just do fill na, which is the, the function to replace all the NAND values with something, so I want to fill na with zeros. If I just run that, it will return me the column with the na field, but it wouldn't, it won't, um, it won't replace the na in the original data frame. So there is, I believe, in place equal true, but I've heard from a core developer that it m will be depreciate, depreciated or deprecated. I don't know how it's uh, said uh, at one point. So I take the habit not to use it and to just reaffect that to the original column. Ah, except that an underscore would be better. And so this time I replaced my colon and bark lab with the embark lab with the, the NS replaced with zeros. So now like Sam, if you want to check your, your value count instead of uh, the nuns, you will have zeros. So like talking about the holdout originally, like imagine that there were a force, a force port where people embarked, but in our training, we just have three. We want to be once again biased and know that in the holdout, there will be a force one because right now I'm not supposed to know about it because I'm not, I'm not supposed to know anything about the holdout. So I do my prep on the training with what I know about the training sets. And then I, I will have to adapt and I will work only with what I know on the training set. That's cold again. Okay, so the H column, uh, we can plot things directly with pandas. So we're gonna first use the magic common matplotlib in line. Uh, so that's from the Jupyter notebook. Matplotlib in line. And then we're going to do df age dot east. Oops. I know D that should be there. And we have an histogram, so well, okay, there is no title, no, no, no labels, nothing, but it was 
simple and easy. Um, of course, you can do better than that. Um, I'm not the best at visualization, so and I well, I use it rarely. I have to say. Um, I know that now you can change because and um, and use other stuff than Matplotlib. So if you can, if you want to use Seabone, you can set Seabone as the default. Um, Plot like things to plot, library to use to plot. Yes. That that allows you to just plot that in um in a in a notebook. You don't you don't need to import. Uh, did I, no, I do, I didn't import it. I don't need to import it. Like it's it's a magic command from the Jupyter notebook. There are other magic commands, but this one allows you to plot directly without importing Matplotlib. Or anything, and it just displays it. It's it's uh, the magic commands of a person signed before them. You have like different. I'm um, sorry. You can also use like the command line or some stuff like that. If you look for that, you will, uh, yeah. So time per, like allows you to time your, the, your running time, uh, the running time of your cell. Uh, so the matplotlib one that we just used. Load is quite useful as well. Um, allows you to load something that is in a different uh, file uh, system I don't use often. Yeah, that's, that's all there. And there is, yeah, there is one that allows you, I think it's, uh, uh, I don't remember, to use the command line. There is one to use the command line as well. Usually I use a... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a magic command, you're right. Yeah. Usually I open a terminal. <laughs> Because <laughs> like it's same like same you can open terminal so I prefer to open a terminal and do everything in terminal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think there is a difference with bit when you use it and when you don't. Don't ask me what again. Like, not. but there is a difference, I believe. Okay, cool. I'll look for it. I know there, yeah, I'll look for it again. Um, find the number of observation with none in the H column. So there is, if you just want that, you can just use the is null, um, function. So df, we said age. So, oh, crap. If we just do is null, it will return a list of booleans telling it, telling us if it's if it's null or not. If the value is not is null or not. If we want the number, we just have to sum that, and it will return the number of of true values. Okay. So what we're going to do next is to replace the missing value, these 177 missing values, using uh, the median, but not the median of all the column, but the median per P class. Because it was it was true then, it's still true now. Like depending on on your P class, usually you don't have the same age. First class are usually not the same age than first class, third class. Sorry. So I decided, and like once again, yes. Um, like. The nan in pandas, pandas is built on numpy, so it's, it's a numpy, it's a np.nan. 
So it's, that, as we said, it's a float. Null, like same, that's more a Python thing than a pandas thing. I think null is like just an object. I will have to check, but that would be the type would be different. But like in a pandas, in pandas, you wouldn't have null. You would have nuns. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's called like that, but because you could have also when you have a date time colon, I didn't put anything with date time, I think. But then you have it's not nine, none. It's n a t, so not a time. And then if you use is null, that works as well. Okay, so we're gonna do a pivot table. So we're going to give a name to this pivot table. So age underscore median. Median. Equals df dot pivot underscore table. And so we want... the median of the h colon or index is the p class colon uh, that's not correct index equal p class and the function we want to aggregate with so ag func is Median. So if we want to have a look, where am I? Oh. At our pivot table, it looks like that. So the median age for the first class is 37. Uh, second class 29 and third class 24. And once again, because there are nuns in the H colon, that's why we have uh, floats. So after that, what I wanted to do is to replace the NAND values. I left the NAND values, sorry, in the H colon um, with these medians. Uh, what I've done is not super, is not really beautiful, but I didn't find another way to do it. And I wanted to use my pivot table and not just do a pivot table like that. Um, there might be nicer way to do it. So what I've done is that I applied a function to two columns. So So I want to work with the age and p class colon. So once again, like what we said earlier, the the two pair of square brackets that are necessary, otherwise it wouldn't understand what we're talking about. And we're going to apply a lambda function. So if you're new to Python and don't know lambda function, don't don't bother. Like just type it, and that will be fine. So what we want to do? Yes, yeah, sorry. For reminding me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I've never done that. How do you do that? Control space B. Control shift B. Okay, so it's, that's one line. <laughs> Still better. That's something. Ah, uh, F11, no, F11, uh, yeah, that's no, that's good, oh, cool, 
Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, that's probably better in the back. Um, learning something new every day, that's cool. Um, okay, so what I want, and that's here that was not really convenient to do, um, I want to take the um, median age corresponding to my P class And if I do that, I also have to look for the value because otherwise it will just return um, uh, it won't return the what's inside the cell like the, not it's not exactly a cell, but like it won't return exactly what's inside the cell. so if we want to do that, we have to do a dot values with a a it's better and a zero like I have to pass it zero because it returns a list even if there is only one thing. So I want to do that if the age is null. And I, I'm still in my lambda function. Else I want to, uh, otherwise I want to keep the age. Yeah. Yep. And axis equal one, otherwise it will work uh, on the rows. And then you can do like a value count or like something to check that you have no nuns or you can do, oh no, I've, I've put, sorry, plot an histogram of the age column and then we'll see that it's a little bit different from the previous one we've done. This two times. And if you look at the previous one, it's a little bit different. We have more value around like 2030 because it corresponds to the 177. Like they were, what, 24? They've been replaced by either 24, 27, or was it 37 or something like that? Okay, another, we'll create other columns. Um, so we're going to create a column with the number of other member of the family. If you look at uh, the, um, the information about the data set that I put there, so we have SIBSP is the... the um, the siblings and the, spo the spouse, and we have Porch, which is parent and children. So we're going to use these ones, these two ones, to know how many other people from the family there were on the boat. Uh, and to do that, that's super easy. You can just add two columns. So same, if you just add the columns, you won't create anything. So we're going to create a new column called uh, family. And we're just going to add the two columns we were talking about, which are sib 
SP, so sibling and spouse, plus oops, uh, the parent and children. And we can have a look doing a value count. Okay, the, the next one, it was more to show you that another thing that we could do. Um, so this one I called socio, so like, because the, the, in the family colon, you have other members of the family, but you don't have the person themselves. Um, so I wanted to just add the person. So this one I called socio. And what we can do is, so I'm going to put brackets because we're going to do two things. So we can add the person themselves to the family uh, column. And to do that, oops, with a Y would be better. Um, you can just do a plus one and it will add one to all your column. To each, each value of your column. And then if you multiply by the class, the P class, P first class, uh, it will take them one to one. The first one multiplied by the first, like the first uh, family plus one multiplied by the first P class and so on. So it will do it line by line. Uh, and same, it will give you like different values. Uh, like honestly, this one is more like an excuse to show you that to, to show that what we can do. But it was more like when in the family members you have everyone, so it would, there would be my family members, but not me okay. counted in the thing. So I added one because like I'm still part of the family. So yeah, and multiplied by per class because wh whatever. <laughs> it's, just an it's just an example to show things that we can do with columns. Um, So here we can see that we have like, yeah, definitely different values. Okay. So another thing we can do is to, instead of looking at the head, for example, of your data frame, is look at the sample. Um, it's it's good. I can go down or Yep, sorry. I think it does that row by row. I don't know. It gives you the value. I don't know what it does. Cause it returned, I think it's more or less returning the column. Yeah. I, I think it's just the column. If we do that. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, it's not the colon. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, it is the colon. Zero, zero six one two. Yeah, it seems that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if I if I just look at the colon, you have the same thing. It tells you that it's a met method. Well, I don't know. It returns information about the method. I think not about the. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, um, oh yeah, I was on the samples. So sometimes it's more interesting to have a, a random sample of your data, um, either to make sure that the first five rows are not, have not something specific and yet that you can see different, different rows, uh, at the, di at different place in the, in the data. Um, and sometimes it's interesting to play with the random state to have, to see different cases. So if we want to do that, df, so we're going to look at the cabin column. And we do dot sample. By default, it will just return you one row. Uh, I don't know what the random state is by default or if it changes each time. It does it say it. Uh, random state none, so it's probably changing each time. Um, so, so you can either put the bracket at the beginning or you do shift tab. And then you use the plus here, uh, to extend it. This one to, to lower it. Oh no, this one puts you it, puts it in the back. So first thing we're going to pass it is the number of uh, sample that we want, so 15. And I like to give it a random state uh, because sometime you will see something interesting. And if you want to reproduce it, it's good to have your random state. Or if you want like one of your colleagues to look at the same rows, um, same. Good to have a random state here. And so you can see we have like random indexes and the and the corresponding values of the cabin column okay so what we're going to do is create a deck column with only the first uh the first letter here Okay, so deck my yeah. So new colon called deck. We're gonna apply a lambda function to the cabin colon. So same we do, but like this time it's easier because we have just one colon, so the function will be simpler. So, if x is a float, meaning that it's going to be a nan, so if I could have done, maybe is no, not sure, um, is instance x float, then I want to keep it, I want to keep the nan values, Else, I want only the first letter of, oops, 
um, only the first, yeah, the first letter of the, the cabin. So I want to have a value count to see how many, uh, how many value of each deck I have. Oops. Deck. So now if I'm not interesting interested sorry in having low values I could put um all of these so a f g and t in an other um like label label them as other so what I could do is use np where so df uh, df deck sorry equals np dot where did I write it yeah um, where the deck is in a f g or t so there is a dot is in function to check that. And we pass it just the list of values that we want to check. So A, F, G, and T. Here. Uh, so if my deck is in, in, is equal to one of these values, sorry, I should have put that up there. Then I want to put, I want to replace it with other, um, else I want just to keep the deck. <laughs> and why, what I want to do with that is, um, do a get dummies. Um, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 15. Yeah, I think we're fine. Thanks. Um, so get dummies will transform, well, will not transform, will give you for each of the value of your colon, it will create a new colon and will put zero and ones to tell you if the value of this row was like, um, so for example, what do we have? C or not? We'll see, like I'll, I'll, it will be easier if you see it probably if it, it's not, uh, that clear. So we're gonna, so that's creating a new data frame. So deck underscore dummies equals pandas dot get underscore dummies. And we're going to pass it the column that we want. So df uh, deck. And we're going to give it a prefix that it will put uh, at the beginning of each new column that it creates. And our prefix will be deck. And then we can look at the head of this new data frame. So deck underscore dummies dot head. And that's what it looks like, and it's easier to explain when you have it here. Oops, sorry. Okay. 
Okay. And so, so this one again created one new column for the, the values that we had left in our deck column, meaning B, C, D, E, and other. And each time it, for each row, it will tell us, okay, so this one was a none because there are zeros everywhere. This one was C. This one was a none. This one was C. And so forth and, and so on and so forth and so on. And so what we want now, because it's a sep it's a new data frame, what we want is concatenate it with our, our original data frame. So we're going to do df equal pandas, no, pd, sorry, dot concat. And we're going to pass it a list of data frames that we want to concatenate. So we want to concatenate df and uh, the deck dummies. And we will give it axis equal one. Because otherwise it will concatenate regarding rows, uh, which won't be exactly what we want to do. Meaning that we will have like a, a bigger data frame with lots, with lots and lots of nans, which is not really what we want. Um, and if we check, we do df dot shape. And we can see that now we have 22 columns. So we added some here and there. Uh, so like the labelized one and, um, uh, what? Oh, yeah, the, the family one, the social one and the five from the get dummies. So if we want to drop columns now, uh, some columns are not wouldn't, wouldn't like are not going to be used because the, um, I get a message and I will do the second part this afternoon. Don't know like it's going to be updated in the schedule. Um, so for the machine learning side, we're not going to use certain columns, so we can drop columns. Um, so we're going to do a to drop. We're going to give it a list of columns that we want to drop. So name. Um, ticket, cabin, sex, embarked, embarked, and deck. And normally, I have done, there's probably misspelling somewhere. It would be too fun otherwise. Too easy. And, oops. What we're gonna do is df equals df dot drop. And we're gonna pass it the list that we just created. So to drop. And same the axis. Because I think by default it's zero. And put the bracket at the good place will help. Up. And so now, like, same if you want to do a shape. We know I've only 16 columns. Yes. I'm not sure you can do that. Uh, I'm not sure you can do that. Because I over... Yeah. Because like here I... The way I've done it, df equals blah blah blah, I've, I have over overwritten my data frame. So... That's why usually the thing is, here I don't care, and really I know I'm not going to use them anymore, but otherwise the advice would be give a new name. Like when you want to keep your data frame and and want to apply something to it, just give another, give another name, create a new object. 
Yes. Can you what, sorry? Oh, yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. You can, I didn't do that. Cause, uh, in the subsetting, like, we could do, we could have, like, here a list, com you can have a list comprehension, you can have, like, anything. You could use a start with, or, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Um, okay, one way to re reorder your colon if you want to do that. Or that could be another way to drop columns. Like if you want to, if you have a hundred columns and you just want to keep 20, you can just decide for a list of 20 and pass this list to your data frame. And then you will just keep this, these 20 columns. So like for me, it was, it was just to give an example, uh, how to do that. So just to avoid having to type everything, I'll just do a df dot columns that will show all my columns and the so I'll just copy that um, call list that and the only thing I'm gonna do is to move survived at the end because I like it it's my target I like to have it at the last column just personal preference. Um, and we can just do df equals df and pass it. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Call list. And if we do a head, we'll see that the... Um, Just the first two ones. Oops. Ah. I was surprised not to have put a Q somewhere instead of a A. Um, here. And we have the survive colon, which is at the end. Uh, okay. So another one we can do is to check at the correlation between uh, the numerical columns. So here... Because I find it nicer, I'm going to do import seaborn as SNS um, and create a correlation matrix for my data frame. And I'm going to just display it as a with a heat map. Okay, try again. So SNS dot heat map. So my correlation matrix. And I'm just putting some uh, other parameters. So red yellow, green. Ah, uh, 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 uh. What is it on up here is? Ooh. Ah, it's GN, not GR at the end. Here it is. Um, so obviously the diagonal is super green, dark green, because, well, it's, all the values are ones. Uh, and the rest show us how much correlated are the different numerical, um, well, they're all numerical now, uh, columns. So we can see that here, which makes sense, socio and family are highly correlated. If you remember the way we, we, created them, that makes complete sense. And if we want to look at a subset, we can also do um, just pass it a list 
So double square brackets. Um, if we look, if we want to look at family, socio, and all the like, uh, like sibling and sp spouse, and the parent and children. Uh, up. Ah, yep. Bad, bad, bad. That's not gonna work. Ah. Another square bracket and dot core. Uh, tuck. We, uh, what is it? Family. I don't know why I want to put a, uh, I, another Y at family. We can see that there, there are, some of them are highly correlated. Um, cause I'm conscious of time. So like the old out, what we would have to do here is to do all the transformation that we've done uh, to our training set. We would have to do it to our old out. Uh, we're not going to have time to do that right now, but that's not a big deal anyway. Everything, like I've saved another data frame. So like if you come this afternoon, there, there won't be a problem. We're just going to see how to save a data frame. Um, I'll just do that so that I can get up there. <laughs> so if we want to save df, we do df dot do to sorry underscore csv, and we pass it the the um, the path uh, where we want to save it. So I wanted to save it and don't and uh, sorry in the same folder as previously. So data slash Titanic. Um, slash, uh, my Titanic or whatever you want to call it. My Titan. Oh, but yeah. Titanic dot CSV. And we've saved, um, our data frame with all the changes. Okay. Well, it's noon. Um, so as I said, so apparently I'm taking over someone this afternoon, so I'm going to do the machine learning part. I don't know which room, but it should be, it will be updated on the schedule. Um, and it, well, no, five is not a tutorial room because seven. Okay, cool. Then, well, if you want to go on, uh, please come this afternoon. Otherwise, see you somewhere around in the conference and have a good lunch.